welcome to our fourth event of the series uh, Advanced in Vitro Models Beyond the Standard Simulation. Today we are going to talk about uh, BBB and Brain Model. Um, I'm uh, Tommaso Sbrana and I'm the CEO of IvyTech. In this presentation I'm going to uh, introduce the IvyTech technology. Um, then we will have a presentation from a product specialist of uh, Panasonic for their nice uh, uh, platform. And then we will have uh, a scientific presentation um, regarding the applications of the Avitech technology. Um, before to start, I, will, I would like to introduce myself. I'm a biomedical engineer. In the last 13 years, I've focused my attention on the development of new tools to overcome the limitation of a multiple plate or transfer system. Um, at the beginning, when I was a researcher at the University of Pisa, uh, I was mainly involved in the technical aspects related with the design and characterization of these prototypes. And then I shift my attention on the technological transfer and for me, it has been a natural step found Ivy Tech in collaboration with some of my colleagues. So Ivy Tech has three main goals, uh, releasing a, an enabling technology to, to develop advanced in vitro model, um, to standardizing the data and increasing the predictivity of these models uh, if compared to the human reality. So we started in 2014. At the beginning, we were mainly focused on the Italian market. Uh, in 2016, we released our first starter kit with a first version of our peristaltic pump and some chambers, and we signed the agreement with our current Italian distributor, Twin Helix. In the following years, we expand our uh, network of distributors, and we release our new version of, of peristaltic pump called the Life Flow. In 2020, uh, the product's portfolio counted up to six chambers and a peristaltic pump. Our business model is structured on three main pillars. Uh, the first one is to provide the technology through a distributor's network. The second one is to help our customer releasing uh, engineering services, uh, mathematical model or uh, um, scale, scaling model in order to increase the correlation between the, the in vitro model and the reality. And then we, we can offer also uh, the biological development of the in vitro model in collaboration with some uh, biological partners. Our mission is to fill the lack between a 3D and static model with a fifth dimension, fifth D uh, model. We want to add a fourth dimension um, related with uh, the dynamicity of the environment. So in our chamber, we have the flow of medium which recreates the blood action in human circulation. We are talking about an exchange of nutrient and fresh oxygen, as well as mechanical stimulation of the cells. Uh, this is not enough in order to be predictive of the human reality, because as we know, the response to an exogenous stimulus is the results of a cross-modulation of different tissues. So we have to be able to mimic also this scenario in our in vitro models. So the fifth dimension of our in vitro models is represented by this cross-talk between uh, different organs that we call multi-organ approach. Our technology is based on uh, user-friendly uh, products, uh, which recreates in the mesh the standard the multiple plate or the transfer system. Uh, as you will see in this video, also the protocols that you have to follow are very similar to the procedures you are used to follow in, um, in your biological lab. So uh, starting from a sterile chamber, we have just to open it, see the cell suspension and in case of a floating scaffold we can fix in position using a plastic ring then we have to close the chamber and clamp the system now the cells will attach to the support or the tissue will mature in an incubator environment once the tissue will be mature we will start with our biological uh, uh, stimulation um, our chambers are standardized in dimension, so we can use a commercial scaffold such as sponge, hydrogel solution, or even a commercial reconstructed tissues. Uh, we can print the 3D structure inside of the chamber, or we can directly bioprint a tissue using a, a commercial bioprinter. 
the chambers, once the, the tissue is mature, we have to expose the cells to a dynamic environment. So the chambers are designed to expose the cells to a flow of medium, and we use our live flow, a peristaltic pump, compatible with the incubator environment. We can have a tissue in dynamic condition, but we can also have a multi-organ approach. So we can join together different modules, each one focus on uh, the simulation of a different tissue, and this crosstalk uh, um, will be uh, assured by uh, an exchange of liquid, which represents an exchange of information between the tissues. So this is important once we have to test the, 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 the effect of a drug, because we can test the principal effect of the drug onto the target organ, as well as the side effect onto the related tissues in one experiment. The chambers are standardized in dimension, so uh, we, we have the live box one, which reproduces the cell seeding area of a single slot of a multiple plate system, and live box two, which reproduces the cell seeding area of a transfer. It's important to monitor in real time what happened in our advanced model. So on the left, you will see how, how we can sample the liquid, avoiding any damages for our tissue and maintaining our experiment online. On the right, you will see how uh, the transparency of our chamber allows to uh, perform real-time imaging using an inverted microscope or an advanced optical uh, uh, imaging platform. Uh, the chambers are equipped with removable glass disc on the bottom side and on the top side of the chambers. Um, and Lightbox 2 is equipped also with a, a removable and porous membrane. The porosity and the material of this membrane reproduce the transfer uh, that you can find on the market. So at the end of the experiment, the user can remove this support in order to recollect all the, the attached biological material and perform a post-processing in a plate or in a petri dish. We have two main lines of uh, chambers on the market. So Lightbox 1 is a family of bariactors uh, developed for attached cell culture condition. Lightbox 2 um, has been developed to, to mimic physiological or pathological barriers, and it's equipped with a removable and porous membrane. Life flow is the name of our peristaltic pump. We have two different versions. Uh, the first one is the constant uh, modality and the programmable modality, Life Flow Pro. Uh, Lightbox 1 has three different chambers. Uh, uh, each one compatible in dimension with a cell seeding area of a, of a single slot, a six well plate, 12 well plate, and 24 well plate. Lightbox to reproduce the uh, cell seeding area of a transwell of a six, 12, and 24 well plate. In the last case, we are talking about standalone commercial insert that, that, that can be directly housed in our uh, bariactyl. Uh, Life flow has two different versions. Uh, in the programmable uh, version, the user can decide the time length of the experiment and characterize this experiment by different periods. Each period can be characterized by a flow rate and a direction, and the pump will autonomously adjust all these parameters following the user's setup. This is uh, this has been uh, developed in order to avoid, for instance, the visiting uh, the biological lab in the weekend only to adjust the, the, the working parameters. Once the tissues mature, once the cells are attached to our support, we have to place everything in the incubator environment. As you can see, the pump is a very compacted system. We have a removable drawer where we can uh, uh, place all the, the fluidic stuff. Uh, once the, the, the system is in the incubator, we have just to turn on the pump and switch on the model. So at this point, uh, the dynamic experiment will start. Uh, let's see some applications. I will focus my attention on uh, BBB and brain model. Uh, first of all, we have to choose, uh, basing on uh, the, the tissue that we have to, to mimic, uh, we have to choose which is the best chamber that we are going to use and also which is the configuration. So in case of Lightbox 1, we have just one inlet and one outlet. The flow will, the liquid will flow from the inlet to the outlet, so we have just one configuration. In these slides, I summarize the main tissues that have been developed using this product. 
uh, Livebox 2 has been developed to, to mimic physiological barriers in both hair liquid interface or liquid liquid interface. We can work with the same medium which uh, fill both the apical side, apical chamber and the basal chamber. Uh, the membrane uh, divided into uh, section uh, the, the volume uh, in apical volume and a basal volume. Uh, but we can work also with two different media. One in this slide, uh, the green medium and the blue medium. Um, by this way, we can use different cells on the top circuit and on the bottom circuit. Um, we, can we can work also in perfusion configuration in order to have uh, a um, perfusion of a very thick and porous scaffold placed onto the membrane level. And this is the suitable configuration for a bone, for a bone model. If we reverse the direction of the flow, uh, we can maintain in floating condition a spheroid located on the bottom chamber. In this case, the membrane acts as a filter in order to avoid the flow of the biological material outside of the chamber. Uh, in these slides are summarized the main applications uh, that have, where our chambers have been used. And let's see how to develop uh, a BBB model, for instance. Uh, the BBB is a um, uh, liquid-liquid interface barrier, so we have to choose between a niche configuration and a liquid-liquid interface configuration for our Livebox 2. In case of niche configuration, we will have uh, uh, the flow only in one side on, of the chamber, and we will have a pseudostatic condition on the other side of the membrane. This is to shield cells that have been placed here. Uh, so, basing on the, the models that we are going to develop, we will choose between diff, these configurations. Uh, the disposable material um, related with this product are the membranes, in case of BBB, we suggest the use of a transparent membrane in order to monitor in real time the cell's behavior. Um, and we suggest the use of PET membrane, 0.45 microns in pole size. Uh, also, the glass disc uh, represent, represent a um, disposable product. The BBB is a complex barrier. In general, in literature, you will see at least two different uh, uh, type of cells, but we can increase this number in order to refine our in vitro model. In this, in this uh, presentation, I consider uh, the protocols to develop a complex barrier represented by two different tissues, uh, the, the red tissue and the yellow tissue. So let's see how we can see the cells in order to start our dynamic experiment. First of all, we have to see the cells on the top side of the membrane. So, uh, using our sterile light box two, we have to fill the bottom chamber uh, using fresh medium. So as you will see, uh, we use the inlet tube and the pipette in order to inject our liquid. Um, because of the transparency of our chamber and also the transparency of the membrane, we can uh, uh, monitor the liquid inside of the, uh, of the product. Once the bottom chamber is completely filled with the medium, we have to work on the apical, uh, apical chamber. So we have to inject a cell suspension using the, inlet, the upper inlet. And then we have to, um, to, to, to wash the inlet tube using fresh medium in order to collect all the cells onto the uh, in, inside of the apical chamber. The cells will attach to the membrane by sedimentation. Once the cells will be attached to the, to the, to the membrane, we have to reverse the bioreactor in order to repeat these uh, uh, protocols for the uh, yellow tissue. Once the, the tissue, also the second tissue will be attached, we can decide to change the liquid or start with uh, our dynamic experiment. In case of a brain model, we have to choose between uh, Livebox 1, and in this case, uh, uh, we can have a, a 3D model um, structured on a nitrogel solution, or a neuron steroid, or even mini brain placed on the bottom side of the chamber. In this case, we suggest the use of uh, embedded 
uh, gel embedded uh, solution in order to avoid the flow uh, of the of the neuron spheroid outside of the chamber. In this case, the disposable products is represented by the glass disc. In case of uh, very sensible cells to the shear stress, so to the dynamic condition, we suggest the use of niche configuration. So we are going to have the dynamic environment only on the top side of our membrane. The membrane will protect our cells placed on the bottom side of the chamber. Uh, in this case, we don't need a membrane to attach the cells, so we can use a nylon, for instance, 41 micron in pore size. Um, we have to consider the glass disc as a disposable product, and of course, we have to consider all the uh, material that we need to, 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 to develop our 3D model. In case of a hydrogel solution, we would be interested in the transparency of this uh, product and also the possibility to recollect the biological material at the end of the experiment. Once the tissue is mature, we have to, to connect the chamber to a fluidic circuit where we will have our peristaltic pump. We suggest the use of Life Flow Pro because we have to mimic the blood action, so the exchange of nutrient and uh, oxygen, but we have we have also to be compatible with the cell seeding protocols. In certain cases, in, in the differentiation of our cells, we would be interested in increasing or decreasing the flow rate, so the pump will autonomously perform this uh, procedure. We have to repeat uh, the same protocols also for Lightbox One. And in case of a disease model, for instance, related with uh, um, the increase of pressure because of uh, uh, blood concentration in certain region of our brain, we would be interested in having a LiPA. LiPA is a pressure modulator which will increase the pressure inside of, uh, of one of our chamber. So it's a um, piston which will reduce the lumen of the outlet of our chamber, increasing the pressure. So once all this stuff has been standardized, so once the these models will be ready, we can join together the different modules in order to have our multi-organ approach, also in disease condition. So that's all for this presentation. Um, in the last presentation of this webinar, you will see the technical aspect, uh, the scientific aspect of the applications. If you have a question, I will be happy to, to answer. Thank you for your attention again. Okay, thank you, Tommaso, for uh, your presentation. Someone has a question? Okay, Tommaso, I have on the chat two questions for you. The first one is, uh, it's an hug to develop a multi-organ model where different chambers uh, are connected to be predictive of the reality? Well, it's, uh, this is a good question. It's, um, of course, this is a, a step further if we consider a static approach, so a multiple plate approach but it's not enough in order to be predictive of the reality. Um, the tissues uh, in, uh, in, in the human reality has a certain uh, correlation. Um, I'm talking about, for instance, the dimension of, of the tissues. So we have to maintain a very fixed correlation with the reality. And we can do that by a uh, scale down model. So we have to consider how to maintain the correlation in the reality also in our in vitro approach. So, for instance, uh, we can offer services uh, uh, based on uh, allometric approach in order to develop a mathematical model, which will uh, provide an information uh, about the dimension that we have to, to, to maintain. For instance, the number of cells or the number of bioreactors that we have to use to mimic the first issue, the second one, or, and so on. Okay, thank you. And the second one is, uh, currently we have different examples of advanced in vitro model. What is missing in the simulation of the human reality? Well, the answer to this question uh, 
can be found in uh, uh, the, 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 the guru, the guru's idea, such as uh, Thomas Hartung. Um, he is a very famous researcher, and he said that at this, at this moment, we need to standardize, for instance, the data. Uh, we need to increase uh, the knowledge about uh, disease model, uh, an in vitro disease model. So, for instance, uh, in this presentation, I uh, show how our chamber are standardizing the mesh if compared to the to the standard products. So we can have a direct uh, correlation of the data between uh, um, a static a static model and our dyna advanced dynamic model, and we have also the possibility to incre increase the pressure, so varying the, uh, the uh, environmental condition in order to mimic the pathology, the disease. So this, I think this will be helpful in order to increase our knowledge in the disease uh, scenario. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. No other questions? Okay, so for the second presentation, I would like to, introdu to introduce Naza Buafid. I hope the surname is correct. She is product manager at Panasonic. Yes, hello, good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, my name is Nezha. I will uh, introduce myself. I'm working as a product manager at uh, PSC Europe and today I'm going to talk about 3D cell culture and also um, how the the blood brain barrier can be used in uh, and the special applications in 3D cell culture and how it can help. So um, I will start my presentation. I will just try to share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So yes. So today I'm going to uh, go through quickly through the agenda of today. So we are going to talk about the in vitro models of the human blood bar brain barrier and the difference then between 2D and 3D cell culture, the advantages of 3D cell culture, the different techniques, and also I will uh, go focus on the prime surface 3D attachment plates to make spheroids and how prime surface plates can uh, make or form the 3D spheroids, the introduction of the plates and line up the compatibility with imaging system and some applications and tools and we will go through the question and answers. So to start with, so uh, just quickly about the, the so the blue pain barrier is the is the most important biological barrier uh, between the blood circulation and the central uh, nervous system, uh, consisting of uh, specialized blood endothelial cells, so EC cells that line the cerebral capillaries and are connected very dense tight junctions. So, uh, and automatically, uh, the BBB is part of the uh, neurovascular unit, which maintains the physiological function of the brain capillary, the ECs, and includes cellular components as, as astrocytes, astrocytes, and neurons and microglia. So, the main function of the BBB are the maintenance of the, the central uh, nervous system homeostasis and the prevention of penetration of neurotoxic substances as well as pathogens such as bacteria and viruses. So besides functioning as a physical barrier, the BBB plays a major role as a transport and metabolic barrier uh, and models of the BBB serve as very strong tools in drug development and are important to elucidate further physiological and pathological molecular mechanism. So, therefore, there is a, a significant need for adequate human BBB models for academic research and the pharmaceutical industry, of course. So, 
Minimal requirement will be the reproducibility of results, uh, characteristic uh, permeability, and reference components. So um, expression of main BBB transporters and physiological, physiological cell morphology is, is very important. So, and in recent studies, various stem cell types have been used as an alternative source for BBB remodeling stem cells. And uh, for, so stem cells are self-renewable and can be subsequently differentiated into major somatic uh, cell types as uh, serve uh, as a virtually unlimited independent cell source. So um, here is a model. So uh, to, to form uh, these uh, BBB, there is a step that can be used and to use the induced pluripotent stem cells, and therefore you need some spheroids. So, uh, so here to illustrate just quickly, the closer we can get to mimicking the human conditions, the better the scientific research is going to be toward understanding the fundamental pathology of a disease and also toward predicting patient response regarding drug therapy and estimating the toxicity of the of certain physiochemical entities surrounding us on a daily basis. So uh, biomaterials will allow us to recreate a smaller version of our inner physiological microenvironment, making it possible to host cells and allow the diffusion of small entities such as nanomaterials like it happens in the mammalian body, in our body actually. So cell culture is um, an indispensable tool for understanding the fundamental biophysiological and biomolecular mechanism by which cells assemble into tissues and organs. And to understand the physiological functions of cells and consequently their disruption during in illness also. So nowadays cell culture is used in biomedical research, tissue engineering, regenerative medicine, as well as other industrial practices. And accordingly, this in vitro cell culture serve as a platform to understand the in vivo cellular behavior such as migration and differentiation. Nevertheless, the conventional 2D dimensional cell culture, which have been used since the uh, 1900, the uh, cell culture system may give uh, results that deviate from the true in vivo response, which happens actually in the human body. And this is not something we can rely on, especially in drug discovery. To overcome these limitations, the new three-dimensional cell culture platform are designed to better mimic in vitro conditions. And cell lines provide us with excellent materials for biological studies and 3D uh, culture leads these cells uh, to behave in a way close to the natural conditions existing in the organism. So now only these uh, cells in 2D not only demonstrate an accurate uh, in vivo morphology, they do not have an extracellular ma matrix. So the extracellular matrix or the ECM is an important biological component present in all cellular tissues. And not only does the ECM provide support and encourage self-determining role of shape cells and tissues, also in the BBB. It also determines the cell's characteristics and behavior. This includes uh, cell's ability to survive, its proliferation, its polarity, its differentiation, and its adhesion ability and its migra migration. So because of this central focus of cell culture has been developed to, to new three dimensions, cell culture platform like 3D spheroid to better mimic in vivo conditions. So it's like really uh, offering the in vivo conditions like in the mammalian body. So cell lines provide us with excellent materials for biological studies and 3D culture leads these cells to behave in a way 
close to the natural conditions existing in the organism. So 3D cell culture has continued to gain uh, popularity in many labs because of its more in vivo characteristic and behavior. So um, as you can see also in this picture, as its name suggests, 3D spheroid models are able to grow and interact with their surroundings in all three dimensions. And because of this, 3D spheroids can be more biologically relevant in generating consistent results. Due to this physiological relevant morphology, the diffusion of nutrients and gases act as it does in vivo. So more specifically, nutrients and a gas exchange act as they are in life. And this is an important factor, uh, especially when you're dealing with tumor growth or drug discovery um, and other metabolic applications, of course. And this uh, for drug uh, discovery specifically, which are uh, very good use, especially also with BBB cells. So the types of 3D cell culture, there are uh, many commercially available 3D culturing tools for 3D cell culture formation. And the type of 3D cell systems fall into two categories, either it's scaffold free or scaffold based systems. And as you can see uh, in this slide, also the scaffold free systems depend greatly on the plate where the cells are cultured, whether it's uh, ultra low attachment plates, like we are going to see in the further in this presentation, uh, and they are for the production of cell aggregates as spheroids, or the extracellular matrix, um, ECM coated plates for cell differentiation into organoids, but also spheroids can be used as a step in making uh, organoids and also for uh, spheroids are also in step for organ on a chip. Scaffold free based system are man made mi micro environments uh, that can host cells, whether they are uh, solid scaffolds that offer a rigid matrix and allow spheroid formation or scaffolds like hydrogels that contain an ECM-like complex architecture in which multicellular tumor spheroids are produced similar to solid in vivo tumors. So the technology behind the, uh, the prime surface. So today I'm going to focus on the 3D culture that focus in, focuses on intralow attachment method, specifically the plates that I'm going to introduce today are the prime surface 3D plates. And these plates are coated with a unique hydrophilic polymer. And this is covalently bound to the plastic surface, enabling the cells to aggregate without attaching to the surface of the plastic culture wear. So the ultra-low attachment plates, uh, rather than other 3D uh, culturing models have shown to be very adaptive to the existing laboratory protocols. Uh, they also can be used for imaging in clear plates or for chemical resistance assay in white plates, which doesn't need any transfer step. And this is done by ultra low attachment plates or ULA plates and dishes. And um, our 3D uh, cell culture plates are able uh, to generate uniform stem cell spheroids formation. So it has excellent repeatability and reproducibility for researchers, which is very important in drug discovery. So, uh, and this upper illustration uh, explains a situation when the plastic surface doesn't have any uh, coating on the surface. So the cell adhesion manner on conventional cell culture plastic surface, uh, this uh, explains 2D cell culture, the apple illustration. So if there is no coating on the surface, then the cells, as you can see, will find scaffold and it will attach on the plastic surface, like in this example, and this is the monolayer culture, the conventional one. 
and the uh, upper station, the blue one. Uh, so only those cells can grow on sideways. Uh, so in the uh, upper and the up on the lower illustration, the blue one. So um, when you have the hydrophilic polymer coating uh, on the surface of the plastic ware, as like in the prime surface plates, they do not adhere in the surface and the unattached cells aggregate to each other. And then uh, with aggregating, they form nice spheroids. Oh, sorry. So this is a nice time lapse. Uh, imagine, sorry. Oh. Huh. So this is a nice time lapse uh, image of human iPSC cells, spheroids from the amperbuid body formation. And this is done by seeding uh, 9,000 cells. Uh, within two or three days, they have been followed. After a couple of days, you can see the cells aggregate to form a very nice spheroid. Okay. So this is our uh, lineup of the prime surface plate series. So we have 96 wall plates, uh, white and clear. We have the 384 plates also on white and clear. We have the 24 wall plates and we have also dishes in three formats, the 35 uh, mm, the 60 mm dish and the 90 mm dish. And we have them all on stock. So if you want to order, you will get them uh, like accordingly. And all these uh, plates are individually packed and uh, one case contains 20 plates and all plates are radiation sterilized by the factory, except for the dishes. Some of them are by five packet and some of them by 10. For the plates, for the 96 well plates, we have three different bottoms well bottoms and this is something we are also unique on we have the u bottom the m the spindle bottom and the v-shaped bottom and uh, these different shapes are also a uh, very uh nice especially the v1 which is the steepest button is for cells which are difficult to aggregate so the researcher can choose which uh you know, plate or which well plate works well with their cells. Therefore, we offer uh, like free demo plates that they can uh, try themselves and you can try them and use and see what 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 works the best with your cells. So here you can see uh, this is an example of a human breast cancer cells and you can see that the spheroids grown in the prime surface plate they are overall consistent in uh, their overall shape. And this is very important uh, for obtaining reproducible results because cellular functions within the spheroid are strongly linked to their overall size and uniformity. So in this in example of two uh, different breast cancer cell lines that were grown in three different well shapes, uh, namely the U, the spindle and the V. So the V shape, as you can see here uh, in the last uh, picture, the V shape uh, results in faster aggregation in cer certain cancer cell lines and promotes tighter spheroids. And researchers have found that the V shape works well with cells that are difficult to aggregate, as I say. So the other shape well works well depending on the cells and its ability for aggregation, of course. And so why does uh, the, why does the use of spheroid in anti-cancer drug research is uh, do we use them? So Scalable and reproducible production of the three cellular spheroids is highly demanded. 
So it's very important to do, to have reproducible and scalable results, uh, especially by pharmaceutical companies for drug screening purposes during the preclinical evaluation phase. So these three D cellular constructs, uh, unlike the mono mono um, layer culture of cells, can mimic different features of human tissues, including. Uh, cellular organization, cell cell, and cell extracellular matrix interactions. So, up to now, uh, different techniques, scaffold based and free, have been used for spheroid formation, uh, being the liquid overlay technique, one of the most explored methodologies uh, due to its low cost and easy handling, and also it's very easy to adapt to the, to the existing lab uh, protocols, as I said. Uh, additionally, during the last few decades, this technique has been widely investigated in order to enhance its potential uh, for being applied in high throughput analysis. So speaking about high throughput analysis, we have, as I said, we have also the 384 well plates format. It got clear plates and white plates, and uh, I will explain li later why uh, where you can use the white plates for, and it's mostly used, as I said, for drug screening researchers uh, who want to do as many experiments as they want. So it's generally called high throughput screening. So uh, it's used to test and screen out the drug candidates. So the white plates we have are uh, can be used for the chemonolysis measurement or chemonolysis assay. Um, so clear plates are clear in body and can use it for the imaging systems. And uh, the white plates uh, are there, so uh, the chemolysis signal uh, can be detected in this assay. So most people will have uh, these automated machines like the TCAN uh, to handle many plates at a time. And this kind of automated machines use the 384 uh, format plates and we offer them and this results in the reduction of assay step and time and high speed and most of pharmaceutical companies uh, will want to have these plates. So the uh, slit wall plates we offer them too and the slit wall plates are one of the newest plates we have in our series and as you sorry as you can see the difference uh, uh, of these two plates is that the conventional plates are uh, just have uh, the walls between the walls and for the slit wall plates they have a slit between the walls so the media can circulate between the walls and the plate but in a way they are designed that um, so the 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 sphere width will not go through or pass through the wells. The width is so optimized that the the this, the sphere width cannot pass through. So and applications that require long term culturing and a lot of media exchange and media aspiration has to be done, of course, extremely carefully to avoid the interruption. Uh, of the inattached spheroid. Uh, in this case, culturing the spheroid can be made easier with the ultra low attachment uh, plates with the slit wall design. And these plates allow the media to be aspired or exchanged in one step. And uh, so you just tilt the plate and aspire the media from the corner. Uh, this won't disrupt the sphere width that has been generated and it decreases the overall pipetting time by about 80 percent and it minimizes of course the risk of the sphere width to be damaged or lost because you will not uh, put the pipe tip until the um uh, until the uh, the bottom of the well so this is as you can see here with how uniform sphere widths are being formed and also the medium exchange between the uh, the conventional and the slit wall plates. 
These are some of uh, the compatibility with the imaging technologies we have. So um, uh, the plates, uh, the, the prime surface plates are compatible uh, with these imaging technologies. Uh, so after the, the, uh, you grow the spheroids in the plate, uh, you want, of course, to see what the spheroids look like to do your experiments on the spheroid. And in just one step, you don't have to transfer them to another plate. We just use in the prime surface plate. You can put them in this imaging systems, which are, uh, um, you know, um, compatible with our plates. Even with the uh, Incusate Sartorius, they have uh, made a note in uh, their application note that saying that the uh, spheroids uh, to uh, image them in their uh, Incusite system you can use uh, only the S Bio 384 U plates uh, are set in the Incusites preset list of usable, so uh, they are compatible with this system. Some applications. So uh, this is in stem cell application and 3D stem cell imaging and 3D uh, modeling. So our prime surface plate plays an important role in producing uniform spheroids. And the stem cells cultured uh, spheroids are known to be uh, a very, uh, to be very known to be greatly influenced uh, by their size, uh, like examples before, but with stem cells, it's really influences the differentiation. And this is very important. And in these experiments, we have some images taken of uh, embryonic stem cells forming the spheroid. As you can see in the last week, uniform spheroid uh, were produced using the M shape, the uh, spindle bottom shape well, and researchers found that this type of cells perform well with that shape. So as I said again, it depends on the uh, uh, on the on the well and on the cells to use. Some cells are fine with with are growing well with a certain kind of well shape. This is an example again of uh, generation of retinal uh, ganglion cells with functional axons from human adduce and pluripotent stem cells. And in this uh, application. Uh, this is uh, the plates that were used are the V-type plates. And these cells uh, uh, where there were 4,000 cells that were seeded in each well in a time of 30 days. And you can see here a schematic diagram of the protocol of cell and uses induction of retinal ganglion cells. And the uh, retinal ganglion cells were formed from human iPS cells starting within three, 30 days. So here are the results of making spheroids and then uh, the differentiated uh, the differentiation to the ganglion cells for generative medicine and also for cell therapy. So here is all again a time lapse, but I will skip this one because of time. Yeah. So this is a comparison. Uh, this is one of an, an example again uh, of why we use spheroids for uh, their experiments. So this data is a comparison of gene expression profiles between the monolayer 2D and the spheroid 3D cultured cancer cells. And uh, this gene expression shown in cancer Timor. So you have the CD44 uh, and the OCT34, the SOX2 and the NANOC. These are all gene expression profiles. So the spheroid day one and day three, comparing with this monolayer, uh, you can see that in spheroid, they got much more gene expression than the monolayer. So it's said that the more close the actual cancer cells, uh, and they mimic the uh, cancer cells environment in the spheroid type. So here is another example in uh, cancer research. 
So the three D spheroid were produced to look into drug resistance, and it's well known that patients with tumors and receiving chem chemo they are sensitive to resistance uh, to drug to the point that the drugs are no longer effective. And according to the health services, it, this is true to 70% of patients with hematologic tumors or cellular tumors. So using the 3D spheroid, researchers have been able to find the tight junction proteins that play a role in inhibiting the penetration of anti-cancer drugs. Um, and here you can see the, uh, the images of the human lung adenocarcinoma cell spheroids, and they are stained for tight junction clothing one and clothing three, and also the merging of both clothings, that is the last images for the merging. And these images were provided by the Merkle lab and were grown in prime surface plates. And even when the images are merged, you can clearly see the consistent overlap of these time junction spheroids. This is another application again in cancer research. So here's some other aspects of cancer research. Uh, so the 3D spheroid were made for drug discovery or cellular tumors by optimizing the cellular path drug screening. And in this image here, we have a tumor and a multicellular tumor spheroid. And as you can see in the similarities of cell differentiation between these two models, uh, both models have the same differentiation and microenvironment. And the idea here is that the 3D spheroid can be more predictive of uh, in vivo anti-tumor efficacy than the other cellular models. And by creating a more complex type of system to gain deeper insight uh, into so certain functions uh, of molecules uh, in cellular uh, context. So we have a lot of applications. We have a publication list citing a lot of, uh, you know, applications that have been used um, with the prime surface plate. You can have access to this, just send us an email and we can provide them. Uh, so this was my presentation. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know. We'll check the question. Or... So I have a question for you. Yes. Using prime surface, surface plates, uh, it's possible to see the different cell types, uh, such uh, as uh, neuron, uh, astrocytes, uh, and so on, in order to increase the correlation with the reality? You mean this is if it is possible? Yes, it's possible. Well, it, it is, in fact, better than the 2D monolayer because uh, with growing the atrocytes and other cells, you see uh, a more uh, a more closer picture or uh, reactions and cell to cell interactions and cell to matrix interactions um, to it's closer to the uh, the true human what happens the reactions that happens in the human body then growing them in the monolayer to the cell culture what we have used for for years. So, uh, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's actually the better what we have till now. So it's definitely uh, better than the methods we were using till now. OK, if you have time, uh, one more. Uh, yes. OK, neuron spheroid versus mini brain. Can you make a comparison or have a comment about these models? Yes, yeah, sure. Just send me an email and I will look into it. Okay. And I will see if I if there if there are any uh, publications done with that, and I we can and I can uh, share with you the data. I will look into it. We have a lot of publications, as I say. We have reached to more than three hundred. But just send me an email, and if you want data about it, I will check if we have any data available. 
about okay. this specific specific question about this specific field. Yes, but I'm sure. not sure. I'm not sure it is done, but I will definitely have a look at it. OK, thank you. Yeah. There Any are other questions? questions? OK, so thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. And uh, now for the last presentation, I would like uh, to introduce uh, Teresa Barra, PhD from uh, University of Napoli. Good morning. Do you hear me? Yes. OK. Do you see my presentation? Yes, it's perfect. OK, thank you so much, Olive Tech team and Tommaso Sbrana to invite me for this workshop. Um, I'm Teresa Barra, a PhD student from the Department of Biology of University of Naples, Federico II. Today, I will present my PhD project focused on the use of a 3D millifluidic platform to study drug delivery of an neuropeptide through blood brain matter. So let's start my presentation with a uh, general overview on blood brain barrier. This is a multicellular barrier composed by endothelial cells sealed tightly by tight junction. But we can also find different cellular types, like neuron, electrical cells that transmit information, microglial cells, brain macrophages, and astrocytes that support neural function. Blood brain barrier separates the central nervous system to periphery, mediating information from brain to peripheral blood circulation. During the years, uh, numerous strategies have been developed to overcome blood brain barrier and to, to uh, drug delivery uh, of neuropeptide in central nervous system. These strategies ranging from the disruption of blood brain barrier itself to the modify of therapeutic molecules. Among the strategies, we recognize osmotic and chemical disruption, an invasive technique with low efficiency, enhanced trichitosis, another invasive technique. Nanoparticles or nanotubes, uh, these two techniques are two uh, non-invasive techniques, but they could be toxic. Cell-mediated delivery is another technique invasive. Uh, Fox U2 ultrasound instead is a non-invasive technique, uh, but has a large cost. Interstitial warfare or microchips is an invasive technique with a low uh, therapeutic loading, and the catheter enhanced local delivery is uh, a technique uh, that uh, the disadvantage is, uh, is a catheter misplacement. For my project, we focused on nanoparticles. Uh, nanotechnology in the last year so far has the uh, perspective, uh, very exciting perspective, to uh, transport the molecule, uh, therapeutic molecules to the brain. Nanoparticles are colloidal systems that are so small. In fact, they're ranging from 1 to 300 nanometers. They include different materials like polymer, liposomes, uh, gold nanoparticles, and they can transport many therapeutic molecules to the brain, which may be adsorbed, dissolved, or encapsulated. Uh, so nanoparticles can transport molecules to the brain uh, that enhance the, the drug uh, solution into the brain. GH625 peptide is a perturbing membrane domain derived from the H glycoprotein of the herpes simplex 1 virus. It is able to cross both an in vitro and in vivo model of a right blood brain barrier. It can accumulate in cell lines, in particular in the neuroblastoma and glioblastoma cell lines, without alteration of cell variability or cytotoxic. Moreover, it is present intact after uh, three and a half hours of administration without proteolysis. So, a nanoparticles like liposome can be modified on their surface with the GH625 peptide uh, to um, cross blood brain barrier and, and to transport many types of macromolecules. Pituitary and analyte cyclase activating a polypeptide. It's a peptide belongs to VIP glucagon secreting families. It binds to GPCR receptor, in particular with the three different receptors, PAC1R, VIPAC1R, and VIPAC2R. It has been seen in literature that it plays an important role in neuroprotection as a neuromodulator and in anti inflammation agent. But um, the disadvantage of PACAP is its short MIVITA, in particular for five minutes 
continue to about in the bloodstream. For uh, our experiment, we use a live box tube bio bioreactor. This is a bioreactor with uh, uh, different two chambers, an upper and lower ones, uh, separated by porous membrane. For our experiment, we choose uh, uh, a porous membrane of uh, 0.45 nanometers inside, uh, inside, and this bioreactor, uh, bioreactor can easily connect it to a live flow pump with a different airflow. Um, for our experiment, so we have to use a tangential flow uh, because this flow simulates cells on, uh, onto the membrane and the blood-brain barrier have, uh, has uh, two different pathways, paracellular and a transcellular pathway. So uh, this bioreactor better mimic uh, blood-brain barrier simulation with the tangential flow. For our experiment of a 3D blood brain barrier in vitro model, we have uh, chosen BN3 cells. BN3 are uh, blood, um, are, uh, sorry, uh, brain endothelial cells uh, derived from a murine model. And uh, we, have in, we have seeded these cells onto the porous membrane that separate the live box to bioreactor. After seeding cells, we have connected this live box to bioreactor to its medium reservoir chamber and all the system to live flow pump. We have a choose a flow about 200 microlites per minute. This flow is uh, uh, the flow that we have chosen after many tests that don't cause shear stress of our cells. After uh, about eight days, we have performed uh, different immunofluorescence assay, uh, and we have just three, three different proteins. The one, a tight junction protein, and cadherin and bed cadherin. There are two um, different proteins about uh, junctions, adherence junction. And the expression of these three different proteins indicates us the formation of the pattern. Even on these cells, we have performed the lucifer yellow test. Lucifer yellow is an hydrophilic fl a fluorescent dye, and the greater concentration of lucifer yellow in the lower chamber indicates no mature barrier, while uh, lower concentration of lucifer yellow indicates uh, the formation of barrier integrity and uh, a mature barrier. In fact, on these graphs, we can see that the permeation decreases until the four where it remains constant until the six, but decrease until the eight. Even on this also, we are performing the LDH assay. LDH has a, a lactate dihydrogenase assay. Uh, when cells are damaged, in particular plasma membrane are damaged, uh, damaged uh, cells release uh, lactate dehydrogenase so that uh, can be measured with this test. In fact, uh, for the for being three cells, uh, cytotoxicity is less in being three spontaneous activity uh, compared to being three maximum activity and positive control. So, uh, for our system, a nanoparticles like liposome is uh, uh, modified on their surface with the GH625 peptide, and all this system is a self-penetrating peptide that can transport many types of macromolecules, avoiding both endosomal entrapment and the lysosome degradation. And this system can transport PACA predominated our neuroprotective agent through our 3D uh, blood brain binder in vitro model. So we have performed uh, the passage of nanoparticle through our 3D vitro model of blood brain barrier. So we have injected the GH625 liposome PACA predominated in the upper chamber, in particular in the inlet tube of the upper chamber of our live box through where uh, BN3 cells have seeded. And we have performed all the passage at a different time point. Um, only after 30 minutes, we have seen, and uh, we can see on these graphs, uh, that the fluorescence of PACA predominated bind to GH625 liposome is higher in the lower chamber compared to uh, the fluorescence of PACA predominated bind to only liposome. In particular, the overall fluorescence of PACA predominated is higher for GH625 liposome compared to only liposome for all the experiment. Uh, 
moreover, we have a place in our uh, live box to be a reactor in Julie stage real time cell history recorder. So we have monitored continuously um, BN3 uh, nanoparticle passage through BN3 cells. And we can see on this image that BN3 cells seems not to be morphological damaged before and after the passage of nanoparticles. And uh, we can see uh, no signal for PACA prodaminated. So these cells don't retain PACA prodaminated. So me and my group decided to improve our 3D blood brain body in vitro system with the addition of the neural cells. In particular, we have chosen uh, shisha cells in 3D and uh, we have performed uh, this experiment uh, with the differentiation of the shisha cells in the neural system. For the pre preliminary results, we have chosen a, a live box one bioreactor. This is a bioreactor with an only chamber that can easily connect it with the life flow pump. So, shisha cells, we have made uh, 3D shisha cells using hang and drop method. Hang and drop is a method that exploits seal capacity seal cell and seal uh, adhesion matrix cell uh, within an injection chamber. And um, thanks to the gravity force, cells in each contact, uh, in contact with each other, can form a aggregate. In fact, after 48 hours of formation of aggregate, these cells has been, um, have been transferred in lab box one bioreactor. And this bioreactor is connected to a life flow pump at a flow about 150 microlight to minutes. Also, this flow was chosen after many tests uh, that don't cause shear stress to our neuron spirits. In this slide, we can see at the right, light box one with the neuron spheres. At my left, uh, light box one connected by its medium reservoir chamber and the light box and the light flow in an incubator. And at the center, we can see a video uh, about all the setup of 3D neuron spheres. So after um, the test on Labox One bioreactor, we have transferred our 3D neuron spheres in a Labox Two bioreactor. So BN3 cells were seeded in uh, the upper chamber onto the porous membrane, and 3D neuron spheres in the lower chamber of a Labox Two bioreactor. So Labox Two was connected to a medium reservoir chamber, and all the system to a life flow at the flow about 150 microlight to two minutes. After 24 hours, we have made a different immunofluorescent SSA, in particular for three different protein, KI67, ZO1, and Betubulin or class 3. KI67 is a, neuro, is a nuclear protein marker that uh, um, is a marker of uh, proliferation cell. And the ZO1 is a tight junction protein, while beta tubulin of class 3 is a neural marker. So um, we have made again a nanoparticle passage through this new 3D blood brain barrier in vitro model. In fact, again, we have connected the uh, lab box to bioreactor with its medium reservoir upper, upper and lower chamber, and we have injected in the inlet tube of lab box to bioreactor pH 625 liposome PACA prodaminated at the flow uh, of 150 microlight to two minutes. Uh, the end point decided for this experiment is uh, two hours. After two hours, we can see our neuron spheres in bright image at my left, and uh, um, we can see a uh, neuron sphere the lab led with the PACA prodaminated at my right. We have decided to perform also an immunofluorescence with the co-localization of PACAP receptor, two PACAP receptor, PAC1 and VPAC1 in green, and the GH625 liposome PACAP predominated in red. 
So I conclude my presentation saying that we have successfully obtained a 3D blood brain barrier model to study drug delivery of nanoparticles through this model. For future direction, we have recently uh, established a collaboration with the Swiss group that study mini brains. Uh, these mini brains are 3D neural, um, or better, IPSC neural stem cells uh, that, uh, mm, uh, that uh, express three different neural stem cells, in, partil in particular a neuron, astrocyte, and a oligodendrocyte. Um, these mini brains are important for our experiment to improve our 3D blood brain body model with um, the addition or better the substitution of endothelial cells uh, not for BND3 but for uh, endothelial cells from a human model and pericyte. Um, we, uh, me and my group also win uh, um, a research funding from our university uh, to study, to use our 3D blood brain in barrier in vitro model to study glioblastoma tumor. So I conclude my presentation thanking uh, many people, in particular my PhD tutor, uh, Professor Salvatore Valiante from the Department of Biology, my chemistry group, uh, Professor Stefania Galdiero, uh, Dr. Narita Falanga and Valentina Del Genio, uh, my Professor Vincenzo Lafort and all my lab team. So thanks for your attention. Uh, if you have any question or any curiosity, I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your presentation, Teresa. And uh, yes, I have on the chat one question for you. What are the challenges uh, in the development of a predictive in vitro model? Uh, sorry, I can't understand. What are the challenges in the development of a predictive in vitro model? Uh, okay, um, for uh, the, this uh, first experiment, uh, we uh, have a uh, um, predictive in vitro model uh, using, uh, um, not using an holometric approach, but with uh, the next experiment, so we uh, can use, uh, um, uh, sure, a, an in vitro and allometric approach to standardize our model. So um, the standardization used is that uh, um, a standardization with the, we use uh, with the BN3 cells uh, about uh, um, 100 uh, cells in the upper chamber and um, the 3D cells in the lower chamber using uh, a standardization that we have uh, in accord with Tommaso. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions? Okay, so... I want to say thank you all for your attention and please let us know if you have any questions. You can contact me or you can contact Tommaso Sbrana. And so thank you very much. Tommaso, if you want to. I want to say thank you to everybody to be here. And as Manuela said, uh, if you have a question or thought, uh, please uh, contact us uh, by email. So thank you again for your participation. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.